this is a uh, this story for tonight will be a very unique folktale from Karelia in Finland. That's a story I wrote for my niece Reina for Christmas last Christmas, twenty twenty one. It's called Bears of the North, or a Keyu called the Mialiki, a strange tale from Karelia. Once upon a time in the land of Karelia, there lived a young boy by the name of Karhu. He lived with his family, who were a community of bears, who lived deep, deep in the deep woods in a cave in Karelia. His mother was a great brown she-bear. A uh, Otsu bear spirit being, an Otsu bear spirit being, and his father was a wise old man of Krelia, a great rune singer, and one of the last of the great bear shamans. He had left the main villages of Krelia to live closer to the earth, to live closer to the land, and he, while he was there, he had fallen in love with a great big she bear, and she begat him a son. Who they named Karhu. Now Karhu spent most of his days in relative bliss and contentment, fishing salmon in the streams and picking berries in the bushes or stealing honey from the bees. And he had been born with the ability to change, you see. He had been born with the ability to change to bear shape and then back again back into a boy a human boy one day in May Karhu was in bear shape fishing for trout and was having a devil of a time doing it come here you demanded Karhu he was about to catch it when a glint of green light flashed by his head he heard the voice of the prettiest, cutest little voice he had ever heard. That's no way to catch fish. Here, let me help you. And before his eyes, he saw a little Kayu. All green she was, and glittery her eyes, shine with an emerald light, and her clothes were leaves. And her clothes, for her clothes were leaves and flower petals for her gown. And her little wings were that of a little moth. Here, watch this, she cried. And she took her little bow and shot an arrow right through the trout. Attached to the arrow was a string, and she flew with the fish to the bank. Karu said, was amazed by this, and he burst out, Who? What are you? asked Karhu. I'm a Kayu, of course, silly bear, and my name is Mialiki. My mother is the queen of the Kayu. She named me after the mistress of the forest, Tapio's maiden. We are the helpers of the woodland realm and all the woodland creatures. Karhu came onto the shore and immediately turned into a human boy again. That's strange, said Mialiki. You're the first bear to do that. I'm no ordinary bear, exclaimed Kahu. My father is a great shaman, last of the great rune singers of the mountains, and he can change into a bear as well. His name is Kauko, and my mother is a great she-bear. Her name is Taika, though my f through my father's magic, she, he made it so she can change into human as well. I'm just Kar Karhu. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Karhu, Mialiki said. Now, Mialiki and Karhu, they roasted that fish. And they ate it after saying a prayer. To the soul and spirit of the fish, they talked of many things. Of flowers and in spring and icicles in winter. You know, this is not my only shape. Sometimes, oh, I can be a bear as well, or any woodland creature. I can also appear as a young lady like yourself, if I wish. Really? asked Kahu. Show me. Show me now, if you please. So immediately there in front of Kahu stood a massive she-bear. 
And then she turned into a majestic moose, and then a radiant swan, and then a squirrel, a rabbit, and then a wolf. And then finally she appeared as a young human girl with green hair. You're kind of cute, said Kahu. You're not so bad yourself, said Mialiki. Come, come, said Kahu. Let's collect some berries for my mum. I'd like you to meet her. So the two of them went off into the woods to collect berries for Kahu's parents. They found many blackberries, blueberries. When they were finished, Kahu led Mialiki to his family's bear cave. Mother! Father! I'm home! cried Kahu. Oh, there you are, my little one, cried Kahu's mother. A great black she-bear stood on her hind legs and hugged her little boy. And who is this little girl with you? Mother, I'd like you to meet my new friend, Mialiki. And she is... She is no mere little girl, mother, but a Kayu of the woods. She said her, her, her mother is Queen Aino. Of the Keiu realm. She named her daughter after the great goddess of the woodland, Tapio's maiden. And, oh, but mother, where is father anyway? Oh, he is out collecting honey. He will be back shortly, said Karhu's mother, Taika. Mialiki. Karu, you brought a lot. Mialiki, Karu, you brought a lot of berries. Just put them over there. So the children placed the berries down on a stone shelf in the cave, and Taika changed form into a little old lady with white hair, with two twin braids. Now we will make my famous blackberry and blueberry crumble pie for dessert tonight. I'm sure your father must have caught trout for dinner or something, too. As well as you did. We caught one, one ourselves, Mother. Yes, I know. I see it right there. Oh, no, I didn't. I could smell it on you. I could smell it on you. Yes, me and Leaky ate it already. Actually, it was quite amazing, exclaimed Kahu. Mialiki shot it with a little Keiu bow. Really? said Taika. You know, I still haven't seen you as your Keiu form. So Mialiki changed herself into her Keiu self, and then as a young she-bear as well. Amazing, said Taika. I knew not that you had animal shifting power. Just at that moment, Keiu's father arrived home at the bear cave. Taika, Karu, I'm home. I've got you trout and honey for our dinner. Oh, wonderful, darling. Just set it over there, Taiku, Taika pointed. Dear, our son has brought home a friend. She is a Keiu, the daughter of Queen Aino herself. So Mialiki made her introductions once again and showed off her animal shifting skills. Ah, yes, said Kauko. I've heard Mialiki, the Tapio's maiden, had many servants. But of this sort, I did not believe them until now. Come, let us sit down and tell stories. So the three of them sat down and told stories by a fire. Kauko had made so many runes. So how many rune singers are there? So how many rune singers are there left? Asked Mialiki. Well, other than myself, there is my brother Torben. He has always been jealous of me for marrying Taika. He was always in love with her himself, Torben. And I don't always get along. Torben and I don't always get along very well. Said Kauko. But enough talk about Torben. So they all had a great feast for dinner, of river trout coated in honey, washed down with bear mead, and followed by a blackberry and blue 
a black and blueberry pie. As they had just finished there, they heard a loud growling at the door of the cave. Who's that? asked Miliki. Oh, that would just be my brother Torben, Kauko said in noise. I'll see what he wants. Kauko got up and strode over to the bear cave. Yes, brother, what can I do for you? Not still angry about me marrying Taika, are you? No, brother, I'm fine. You can keep her. What I came to tell you about is a matter of dire importance. Let me in and I'll tell you. So Torben let in, let in his brother, and they offered him something to eat. But Torben wasn't in much mood to be eating, and only took some bear meat and said, I'll get right to the point. <sighs> As you know, something is killing all the last of us great rune singers. Yes, I know. I know this, Torben, but we are not the last, although rare as we may be. Yes, said Torben, and I've spoken to Karina down in Kivesvjarvi village. She is still a wise woman and rune singer like us, and she says, she says, Hisi, the evil one, has awakened. Fish have been starting to die, and the reindeer are getting scarce. We must do something, my brother, before it is too late. Yes, my brother, this is grievous news. Perhaps this is why Mialiki has been sent to us. Mialiki? The Lady of the Wood? She has spoken to you? No, brother, not she, but my son, Karhu, new little friend. Miliki, come on out. And out sped the teeny little cave, all green, cloaked in woodland leaves and flowers, and flew around Torben, the bear. Who or what is that? said Torben in amazement. I'm a Kayu. My mother is our queen. We serve the lady. And if he see us return to cause mischief, we must do in all our power to stop him. I think myself and Kayu should travel to my mother Queen Ainu's realm and seek out my people. Perhaps we can help. The comment awoke a loud guffaw from Torben, laughing deep into his big bear belly. <laughs> Boy, what could such a little thing such as yourself ever do against such an evil being? laughed Torben. We will help, you'll see, cried Mialiki. Kauko stood on his two bare hind legs and spoke. Well, my brother, perhaps we should let them go to, your, to her mother and people. I'd like to go down to the village and speak to Karina. I've not spoken or seen to her in a while. We will leave first thing in the morning. And Miliki and Karhu, I think it would be wise for you two to do the same. That is all I will say on the matter for now. In the morning, now, I suggest we will call, we should all get some sleep. So they all curled up nice and cozy like in the bear's great cave. Little Miliki curled up in little Karhu's arms. In the morning, Karhu woke up. Hey, little Mialiki, how are you? Did you sleep well? Yes, very, very comforting, thank you. You are a very snuggly bear, if I may be so bold. Taika and Kauku were up and about making hotcakes with honey. Kauko called from the kitchen of the cave. Breakfast is ready. They all sat down for great, for grand, great old feast. Torben cried out, "This maid is superb, uh, but I make far better, of course, brother." <laughs> well, that's your opinion, brother of mine. Anyway, after breakfast was 
Dunn, Kauko, Pika, and Torben went off to see Karina, the rune singer, in Kivasiarvi village. Mialiki and Karhu set out to Mialiki's people's kingdom. Now, now you two be careful, chided Taika. Here, Kahu, take plenty of supplies for your journey. Any more, any more honey cakes, Mum? Asked Kahu. Yes, plenty, and some dry trout and a flask of mead. So, Kahu and Mialiki set out. Kahu with a big pack, pack full of supplies on his back. Now the access way to our Keu. Oh, now the access way to our Keu realm lies behind the primal waterfall of Pavola. It lies not far away to the west of here. Um, to the west of here. Just as they were about to approach the waterfall, they heard the sound of a little woodland creature. Help! Help me! Help me! He cried. It was a little fox. Trapped in a hunter's trap, Mialiki immediately flew down to help. Oh, you poor dear little thing. Here, let me help you out. The fox was hurting badly. Thank you. Thank you, dear little one. I am badly hurt. Don't worry. Stay still. I'll get you out of there. Mialiki changed shape for great grizzly and rip the trap right off. I've got you now. I've got you now, yelled the fox, whose eyes gleamed with a bright red light. Now I will devour you. Just then, Karhu changed right in, charged right in and ploughed into the fox. Oh no, you don't, you villain. That's my friend you wish to eat. The fox went flying right into a large pine tree. The fox got up and shook off snow from his fur. You fools! You fools! You're all fools! He see, we'll make you pay for that. And with that, the fox disappeared in a thick, cloudy mist. That was most passing strange, pondered Mialiki. I don't think it was a true fox. Yes, said Kahu. There's a great evil at work here, and I think our little friend is in league with this hissy Uncle Torben told us of last night. Yes, all the more reason to get to my mother as soon as possible, Mialiki said. So Mialiki flew up the waterfall of Pavola and spoke the magic incantation. Water, moon of earth, part for us away to the realm of the magic fay. As she spoke these words, the water parted as a curtain, and a magic portal appeared behind a glowing, bright, iridescent light blue with shimmering gold sparkles. The two of them dove straight into the portal and appeared in the other world realm of the Kayu. Before Karhu's eyes was a magical realm of sparkling and shimmering gems of all colors. Kehu flew in all directions. Large marble pillars flanked the majestic halls, and each pillar shimmered with bright pastel colors. Up flew all shimmering red Kehu with um, up flew a, an all shimmering red Kehu with red hair and red eyes. Sister, where have you been? yelled the fuming red Kayu. Aniki, my sister, how's mother and father? Oh, don't give me that. Mother has been worrying sick, and you are in so much trouble for leaving without permission. You never even let mother know where you were going. Oh, please, said Mialiki. Do I really have to report myself every time I leave our realm? Yes, you do, said Aniki. And who is this friend of yours? Yes, this is my friend Karhu. 
here's a young bear, but also a boy. His his father is is one of the last great rune singers. Anyway, Aniki, this is not important. We have a very dangerous situation in front of us. Dangerous? Not as dangerous as you'll be when Mother sees you, yelled Aniki. <sighs> oh, Mialiki sighed. Oh, just take us to her already. So the two of them were brought into Queen Aino's throne room. And there Queen was Queen Aino, Mialiki's mother. And on the right was her father, King Oxali. Where have you been, my daughter? We were worried sick about you, chided the queen. Oh, mother, I'm very sorry. But, Mialiki began. Wait, who is this? asked the king. A bear? You went away and came back with, with a bear? Yes, father, this is my friend Karu. He is a bear, but also a, a young boy. His father is one of the last great bear shamans of Krelia. But if you will just hear us out. Karhu's uncle Torben says there is a great evil aboding in the forest. And the, this evil is named Hisi. He is po poisoning the rivers and some of the wild life. Just now... Even a fox tricked me and tried to attack me when I freed it. Yes, my daughter, said the king. We have known about this threat for a while, and it is too dangerous. Even for one as you, this is why we were so frightened by your leaving our realm without our permission. Now, young lady, you won't be going anywhere. You're grounded. Guards, take this young princess to her room in her KU tower, and take this this bear out, and take this bear out of our realm, commanded the queen. But mother, no, I'm sorry, you have to listen to us. Karhu, tell them. Karhu was at a loss for words, but then he summoned up his courage and spoke. Your Majesties, please, my father, he is a very wise man. He sent us here to get help from this growing threat that, that th threatens our livelihood just as much as it does yours, pleaded Karu. Don't worry, young man, said the king. We are sending you to meet a friend of ours. He will know of a way to defeat the CC. As for our daughter... She is being punished. So the guards took Mialiki to her room in the KU Tower, and Kahu was instructed in pr to a private meeting with the king and the queen. Now, your majesties, I think you're making a mistake. Mialiki is a good friend of mine. And she, she has a strong will and spirit, and, ve and she's very clever. She can be of help to me, Karhu pleaded. No, boy, said King Oxley. She is mischievous and needs to learn. Now enough of our impetuous daughter. I'm sending you with a KU escort to the North Country, away from here, to meet a very special someone. The KU entourage will make introductions. So, KU was led to the f to the far north away out of the KU realm to a large oak tree with a red door on the front and windows on the sides. Knock, boy, commanded one of the KU guards. Karu hesitantly knocked three times. And then he heard a small voice from within. Coming, coming. As the door opened, out stepped a small dwarfish figure of a man. 
It was a Meninkainen, a Meninkainen, one of the woodland gnomes of the forest. The KU Herald spoke. Let me introduce you to Mudagrega of the Meninkainen men of the Greenwood. His Majesty King Oxley has sent you to him, for he is a very wise and crafty and... All right, all right, all right, shut up, said Moodagrega grumpily. I don't need any more of the, that KU suckering up to me nonsense. Yes, it is true, I, I know why you are here, boy. I've known about the threat of Hisi for some time. Every so hundred years, Hisi makes a comeback and threatens the world of form and the woodland. Well, the first thing we have to do, said Moody Gregor, and he leant over and whispered into uh, Karhu's ear. The first thing we need to do is break Miliki out of prison. We've got to get her out. <laughs> I know she can help us. So Moodagrega and Karhu went to break out Mialiki from her room. Now, Moodagrega took out a special powder. Here, kid, spread this on, spread this on you, Moodagrega whispered. What is it? asked Karhu. It's an invisibility powder, explained Moodagrega. So the two of them came to Mialiki's little teeny door. Quietly, Moodagrega's little gnome hand pushed the key into Mialiki's door to her room. Princess, we're here to break you out, Moodagrega whispered. I don't care what your mother says. Uh, either you've got to come with us and help this spreading evil in the forest. So by the wiles of Moodagrega, they managed to escape from the watch of Mialiki's mother, the queen until they are out in the forest again. And now we turn to Karhu's parents and uncle, who'd gone off to see the rune singer Karina in her small village, Kivasyarvi. And that's where we will end the story for tonight of the Bears of the North, or the story of a strange Kayu called Mialiki. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not very good at writing. I'm not even very good at uh, trying to, I don't know. Well, whatever. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. I'll see you next time. Ta-ta.